Hello and welcome to another episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I shall be doing this king size K2 Scamor uh, wrecking truck. They came out in 1969 and lasted around until 1976 when they were deleted from the line. So that's seven years these are in production. This one's a gold colored one. They also came out in white. Uh, the scale is 1 69th and the later ones just for information came out with Hot Wheels style mag wheels on them but this model here has your standard matchbox king size wheels and tires so having a quick look at it here the tires are very loose in fact one fell off when I was handling it there underneath you can see it says heavy wreck truck that rear swinging arm there whatever you call it jib should sit up on a spring loaded platform but uh, obviously the spring's not working too well the air horns have been crushed as has the roof and this orange thing has been plunged into the hole there maybe to represent an amber beacon who knows why or who put it there anyway here's a close-up of it if you recognize it let me know what it is it's in the bin now but i'm curious as to what it belonged to originally so to begin with i'm going to drill out those rivet posts on the bottom remove the mushroomed ends and split this thing in two so this is not rocket science okay and there is no hard and fast rule so almost every time now i just fish through some drills and just find some that are suitable for the job for example the th smaller one here is great for these ones at the back which are smaller rivets or or posts whatever you call them and this larger drill is perfect for the front so all i'm trying to do is remove that bird edge of that post so i can take the base off so i do that using my battery drill i put a picture up earlier this morning that's why it's got the screwdriver in there so i start off on the front one the big one and I'm not going too deep I'm only taking off the barest minimum amount of material there so that I can uh, prise the base off using a screwdriver now today I'm cleaning as I go it's always good to have a clean workshop and I don't like iron filings in the carpet sometimes I'm in here on a hot day with bare feet and I have had metal filings stick in my foot and I've had to request the assistance of Julia to pluck them out with some tweezers Anyway, there is no footage of that. Instead, here's a close-up of what those posts look like prior to separating the base from the body. Now, I'm looking here in vain, as it happens, trying to find a place with which to use the, uh, the screwdriver against as a lever. So I give up at the back there and I fish around at the front here and I figure if I stick that under there that might do it sure enough the front's loose so now I can just wiggle and squeeze and twist and the back releases ah and that is a pleasant surprise that the original windscreen is in there or oh, broken as it is it's still reusable because the broken bit won't be seen um, there's the air horns on the roof there got to come off for painting uh, this exhaust stack can come off this is actually broken it's supposed to have a, a thinner tube on the top of it so I'm going to fix that up later and here's that spring that's no longer effective it's supposed to press up on that jib and make that stay up to give it some play value this red radiator has got to come out that's just a plastic piece and I'm not using hot pliers here they're just look that color because I've used them on a hot thing in the past so I just push that out like that unfortunately it put a bit of stress in the plastic and made a, a very light pink band on it so I'm gonna have to paint that red to make up for that now this is a great tool if you haven't got one I suggest you get one it's a spring-loaded center punch and I've used it many times for this exact same purpose you can just push down and bang it pops out that air horn bit on the roof there without damaging it just catch it in your hand it's a great thing that's not what it's supposed to be for but uh, that's what I've used it for and it works well 
And I'm going to use it again in a second because at the moment here, I'm just drilling out these rivets here that are holding that crane assembly on the back of this truck. When I put this back together, you're not going to see these screws or all these rivet ends here that I'm drilling out. So I'm going to actually glue this back together and no one will be the wiser. But now that I've loosened it off, I've, I've taken out the majority of the material there. Again, I'm using this spring loaded center punch and it is just great. It, like you push on it and bang, it just shocks this model apart. One, two, three, four, and there we go. As easy as that. I hope it's as easy to put back together. So this here is basically as far as I'm going with this. I'm leaving that spring in situ, and I'm going to paint this model gold. Now this back piece here, I'm going to paint red. It's basically in two pieces, uh, with the exception of the back. They represent hook wires at the back there. They're made from white plastic, and they're held in place with this pin and that pin's going to have to come out so I can take these hook wires out and paint the jib red. Now I'm very very pleased when I look at this because these axles are super wide which means I'll have no problem taking off that lip on the end of the axle there using my Dremel and this rotary tool and I do it as simple as this. As you can see the axle is rotating and wearing down evenly all around as I go and I'm, I'm just using some very light pressure from my left forefinger there to prevent everything from moving whilst I'm working on it. And after I've taken that end off, that mushroom end, the wheels just fall apart. And what's good about this is because of the length of the axle, there's no danger of damaging the wheels. So it makes it a breeze. The front one's a little bit more tricky because it's not there's not that much clearance. But once again, I manage, although I might have just clipped that wheel. Never mind. I'll put it on the back and have it on the inside and no one will ever see it. That's the plan anyway. Now just one more thing. This little pin here that's holding those hook wires in position. This was a bit fiddly, I must admit. A little bit like a Chinese puzzle. I could only get it out par partially out. And then I had to remove each of these plastic pieces individually before I could get the pin out. And they were quite tight actually. But the pin came out very easily after removing these. Now they're a little bit dirty, but I think they're reusable. I've bought some new hooks or replacement hooks online from recovertoy.com and they're really good looking hooks and I think that I can reuse these wires like this one here that's off of another model I have. Um, you can see here it's very difficult to get that end out but I think this end is flared enough to be reused so I'm going to go with that. Meanwhile, I'm going to get the old plastic out of these hooks. So it looks like this. I'll show you how I do that. So these are old ones off of a second model that I'm doing up. And to get that plastic bit out, I use this little flamethrower here. Which again, if you haven't got one, get one. I use it so many times, you wouldn't believe. It's so handy. And I just heat the end up there and melt that plastic. And then pick it out with a toothpick. It's a bit messy, have to go a couple of times, but eventually it looks like this. And this is a perfect example of a, of a reusable part. So here's all the parts here that have been separated. Now it's time to take the paint off so I can undercoat it and then repaint it. I use my old favorite here, Poly Stripper Paint Stripper, or maybe it's just called Poly now. I don't know why they've changed the name of it. Maybe the word stripper was offensive to part of the community, who knows. Anyway, this is good stuff and I love it. Now some people have a jam jar or similar and they dunk their parts in there, which is all good, but I don't like having a mucky workplace and just the thought of having a jar of gloop sitting there. 
for all eternity just turns me off so I like to use fresh product each time and then I can wash it away and have a clean work place to work in this stuff is really good on this gold paint you can see the gold paint is practically falling off look at that it's really quite funky looking isn't it it looks like autumn leaves to me and the red paint's reacting well also so it's a win-win I just need to wash it off I've left it to soak now for or I've, I've left it to, to I don't know cook or whatever you call it for maybe 20 minutes and now it's time to remove the paint under some running water the running water I believe just neutralizes that paint stripper it doesn't harm the environment any I'm assured by the man down at Bunnings where I bought it from how he knows I'm not too sure so it's got off 95% of the paint so I'll just do a little bit more work on these parts and then they will be ready for repainting so after I've paint stripped them I gave them a bit of a, a work over with these wire brushes the copper ones seem to do the better job and they look quite nice and it's great to look at the detail here uh, as I said this is in two parts I'm leaving it as one to paint it and I'm just going to touch up the ends of the, the pin, the pivot pin, make it look like a silver again. Now this roof is dented, a bit annoying, so I've got to try and straighten that out. I'm putting on a glove here because this thing's going to get hot. Once again I'm using this little tiny flamethrower. Very easy to get carried away with this thing and if you get, take it one degree too far the whole model will just melt in your hands. I oh, know, I've seen it happen. So I'm just gently warming it up to hopefully make this metal soft enough for me to prise it back into shape. And this is probably the third attempt and I'm happy with that. So I'm leaving it as is. I don't want to push me luck. Now this spring loaded leaf spring here is not spring loaded anymore and I think it's because that rivet holding it to the model is loose it's loosened up over time so I'm going to give that a whack with a punch and a hammer and hopefully it's going to tension that spring up again and rejuvenate this model yeah, it's definitely returning under its own steam now so that's a good thing now I won't know if it's working until I put it back together but I figure that it's going to work marvellously. So I'm in the paint booth now and I'm giving these parts an undercoat. This is the Tamiya Light Grey. Now, I must confess I know very little about metallic paint. So just on a punt I'm going to use white undercoat in the hope that maybe the metallic paint looks a little bit more metallic -y, <laughs> if there is such a word. Um, I'm sure someone could tell me what, what the best colour is. I mean, I think I've read somewhere black, but I would hate to do black and then it doesn't work out. Um, so I'm going to stick with the white for now. Now, as I mentioned previously, this exhaust stack here is missing a vital part. Now, almost every single one of these I've seen has got the top tube broken off of it. So I've got a little bit of aluminium tubing here of the correct diameter and I'm using the exact same size drill to drill down into that muffler post or whatever you call it, muffler, the exhaust. But before I do that I've got to mark the exact centre using once again, this is the third time this makeover I've used this tool, it's marking the exact centre so that it helps me center the drill uh, this isn't easy at all you have to be very careful when you're drilling freehand like this it's extremely easy to go off of the vertical and you can ruin something so you have to concentrate as you go and make corrections accordingly I'm not going in too deep I just need a shallow 
little pit there into which I'm going to glue an offcut of this aluminium tubing that I've got. And I've marked it with the pencil for the correct length. I'm cutting it with the Dremel and a cut-off disc. And it gets a bit hot, and I must admit I was wincing there when I'm holding it for the camera, because it was burning. And I just deburr it with a small file, and now you can see where it's going to go. So I'm going to glue that in with some super glue. It's this star bond, and it's kind of a gap filler, a thick, clear super glue. You can see it's quite gelatinous, and not only does it glue, but it fills all in one. So it's a great product. And it's ideal for this and you will see when I eventually get it in that little hole it's kind of created a fillet weld if you will around that upper exhaust tube and it's a very neat finish so just checking out the details on this model I notice on the front there it's actually got scammer in like microscopic writing there's some controls on the side, a couple of little foot flaps there to help you get in the door, a toolbox, there's a fuel cap on the back and a drum of cable and also a couple of rear toolboxes there. So nice details in this model. Now this colour paint, I didn't go through the boring uh, part of mixing the paint up because it took me ages to get it right but basically I used the gold leaf X12, the copper XF6, a touch of metallic green and a blob of black and this is the colour I came up with and it may not be exact but it's pretty close to the original and I'm, I'm very pleased and I'm that pleased that I'm willing to give it a coat of this and hope it looks good at the end of the day. So uh, as usual, I, I give it a very light coat to begin with, and then I just go all out, nice wet coat, and I bung it in my oven, my little toasty oven, and that kind of warms the paint and makes it level out a little bit and dries it really quickly. And I actually think that the oven has been one of the best things I've bought for speeding up the makeover process and the, the curing of the paint, and it also provides it makes the paint a little bit shinier I think I can't can't guarantee it maybe I'm just getting better I don't know but it does make it look better I think it's nice and glossy as is this red once again I put this in the sandwich toaster on a little bit of grease proof paper so that when I get it out it's not stuck and the I've had a lot of a lot of uh, wins with that machine so I highly recommend it's a must-have thing in your uh, your hobby room if you're if you've got a hobby room now I'm just cleaning all these wheels individually with a toothbrush and some soapy water just trying to get the gunge out of that groove so often these wheels have gunge in the groove and if you're trying to make something look brand new the wheels form a very big part of the overall look Now these hook wires made of plastic are a little bit tainted, showing their age. What are they now, 50 years old? So I'm bunging them in this bleach and standing it outside in the sun and I'm hoping they're going to come up a little bit cleaner. Whilst that's happening, I'm going to go ahead and attempt to rejuvenate this ancient looking transparency that was hiding inside. It's probably been inside for so many years it's not funny. I use a cotton bud in this auto sole metal polish and when I've got it as good as I can I dunk it in this self shining floor polish if you're a regular viewer you may have seen me do this before I made a mistake this time around I shook the container and it's gone all frothy like a milkshake and I do not want bubbles and what have I got a million of them so I have to shake it off and work it with a, a cotton bud here to make sure there's no bubbles because if there's bubbles you will see them when they're dry 
and they'll be there forever. So I'll get rid of all the bubbles. I just do another visual check and I place it in this onion saver which keeps it dust free until the floor polish has cured. Now the base, it looks a little bit tacky. Uh, these were just plain metal bases. This one looks like it's had some black paint on it at some time in its life. So I give it a really good clean up with the Dremel and the wire brush and a little bit of metal polish and some TLC and one of those little brush strands flew off and stuck me in the hand so be mindful of that if you're going to be using them I wasn't really happy with that I end up giving it a light coat of silver paint just to uh, even it all up if you will to make it look new again um, these came up pretty good. They're very clean and white looking now. They're heaps better than what they were. They're still not perfect, but I believe they are worthy of reusing. These hooks that I had, I've given those a coat of this aluminium spray just to make them look like they've they've just come out of the the machine shop. And I mean, they were a little bit dull. There's the base look, it looks lovely with that silver spray on it. Now there's two headlights missing here, and I did ponder how I could fix them. I looked through an old model tank uh, kit I had with the leftover bits, I found a couple of lights here. So what I thought I might do is modify them and fit them above in the top there of that bumper bar, which is where they're supposed to be, and um, they won't look exactly like the originals, but I think they will make for a suitable alternative. I'm just filling the con concave void there with some plastic putty and smoothing it over with a wet finger. And then I stick a drinking straw in it to try and make what you see on the right there, that's the original. It's not perfect, but at a glance, they look like the real thing. So here's all the parts ready to go back together. I've also invested in some reproduction tires again from recovertoy.com and I'm lucky I live in Australia because I got them in about four days which was amazing so I could go full steam ahead with this makeover and here I'm showing you how much excess there is on that axle which is great for me because I'm out in the shed now and I'm using this drill press and the modified nail method to mushroom the end over and hold those wheels on again. This can be a little bit hit and miss. Sometimes you win, sometimes you don't, but look at that. This was like literally 10 seconds and it's fixed. They don't always work like that. I think the axles have different metals in them. Some are hard, some are soft, but this one worked really well. Now here's the gold painted model and I've refitted the air horn. I basically positioned it where I had to go and hit it with the handle of these pliers knowing they're rubber it wasn't going to mark it and it snapped straight in and I put a little bit of super glue on the back of it and it's good to go I repainted that radiator grill with a matching red to, to hide those stress marks I created when I removed it if you remember they sort of went white pinkish white now I am putting in the refitting the windscreen again it's not perfect it's broken and so I polished it as best I could but no one will see it once it's in there it's going to look great from the outside the amber dome lights I couldn't get them perfect but they look a heap better heaps better than what they did the exhaust stack that's been repaired with the extra bit on the top just sits back in there like that. It's a little bit fiddly, but it goes in eventually. Now I've got to fit, refit the hooks on the back here. Now remember when I took them off, it's a little bit awkward. It's the same putting them on. You have to do one at a time, and then I have to withdraw that pin so I can get the second one on. And then once that's in there, I can then push the pin through to secure those hooks on that like that beautiful 
Now I could go out to the shed and use my drill press, but for this little thing, I thought I'd just use my ball pain hammer and give it about 50 taps. And you can see the end of it changing shape. And there's no way knowing that's going to fall out. I'll just show you how much that's flared over. Here's a mega close up for you right now. Wow, look at my fingerprint, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love modern cameras. Now the back here, this is fighting against that spring, so I have to knock it in with a bit of wood so I don't damage it. Um, I push down really, really hard, and those rivets go bang and they, they snap into position. And I'm just checking out that that works, that works good. Look at that. So again, I add a little bit of epoxy under there to hold those rivets in position. No one's going to see it. It's going to work just as designed at the end of the day and it's going to look great. I've put the two rear screws in. Now I'm putting the front one in and that's the base secured. Now the finishing touch is some stickers for the door. I printed these out on my PC designed them and printed them out. They're one centimeter square and they fit just on the door like that. A little bit boring really, but that's what the original looked like. So that's what I'm trying to recreate here. So here's a reminder of what we started with this morning. A very sad looking model with a dented roof a thing rammed in the top there that makes no sense. The stickers are hanging off, the tires are hanging off, and the crane wasn't really functioning as it should. And now, I think you'll agree, this looks 10 times better. Now, nothing in life is perfect. Sure, this has a few imperfections on it still. The headlights aren't exact copies of what they should be. But you know what, overall it's a very smart looking model and I do love that gold paint. It's the, the gold and the red, I think they look lovely together. Let me know what you think. I gave it a top coat as well of some clear varnish just to finish it off and it turned out beautiful. Now here's a little secret, I was actually working on two of these today and this is the second one, it's the the white style one they came out in two colors gold and white this had similar issues um, unfortunately I didn't get the windscreen that I ordered and I rushed and just put in a, a scratch built one it didn't turn out very good so I'm gonna have to revisit this one probably in the next couple of weeks and finish it off but I just included it here to make this video that little bit more interesting the roof lights incidentally on this model are uh, amber LEDs that I bought from an electrical shop. They're not working LEDs, they're just there to represent the beacons that are missing. Okay, now that we've got these trucks up and running, it's time to make some serious money. Me and Kevin are in the heavy haulage industry, so time to make some cash. Oh, hang on. First call coming in. Hello? You got a truck stranded? Where? Elizabeth and Lonsdale. Yep, yeah, no worries, we'll be there in five minutes. Goodbye. Oh, what? How come I got a flat tyre? Ah, oh, the first job and I miss it. Kevin! <sighs> so, I hope you've enjoyed this makeover. If you have, please comment, subscribe, tell your mates. And I will see you again next week. This is Marty saying goodbye.